Hello traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your midday market update for Tuesday the 27th of September. Here's a question today. How much does it cost to create a job? Well, according to Mark, Martin Feldstein, who is the Harvard economist, each job that is created by the American Jobs Act would cost taxpayers about $200,000. I think I can honestly say that most small businesses could probably produce three times as many jobs on the same amount of money. Once again, the government is jumping into an area where it has proven in the past to have no expertise, and that is in creating new jobs. Now, you think the government would argue that it's going to cost a lot less than $200,000 to create each new job. I wish that was the case, but according to Timothy Geithner in a recent ABC interview, he didn't dispute that number at all. As we've been saying in our market commentary for the past few days, the markets have been very oversold and ripe for a rally. I believe that rally we have seen in the last two days is basically a short covering rally. Last week we saw a tremendous liquidation of all risk assets across the board in most markets. This week we're seeing some of those short positions being covered with very little selling above the market. This is all predicated on a potential solution, and I do mean potential solution, to the Greek-European problem. Mr. Geithner also claimed in the same interview that if Europe went under, the U.S. banks would stand to lose $41 billion. So here we are again, borrowing money to bail out the banks. You know, we used to have legislation on the books that would have prevented the current problem that we are now seeing with the banks. That law was put into place right after, I believe, the Great Depression was lifted because all the bankers felt they were so smart that it would never happen again. Well, history repeats itself just like the markets do. You know, there's an old Hungarian proverb that goes like this, the past is the teacher of the future. This has never been more true than it is today. Now let's go to the six major markets we track and update every day to see how we can create and maintain your wealth in 2011. So let's go to our portfolio manager and here are the six markets we're looking at. And you can see right away basically that we have some changes in our scores. These scores, if you remember, were 90, minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, and so forth, and some very strong trends. We've seen a correction in that. So the S&P now is minus 55, and we all know minus 55, what that means is it's a trading range. So let's go to the charts. And the first chart is going to be the S&P 500. As you can see, we are in, I'm put my Telestrator on and uh, we'll show you what we're looking at. Basically, we see the Dantian trade channels coming down here and also here and kind of like right there. So, here in, in, essence, in essence, we just have a, a trading range bounded by 1220 to 40 on the upside, and on the downside, we're at 11.20. So you've got this basically a 100 point trading range. I'm just going to call it 100 points. I think it's fair to say. And we're now have gone from a very oversold condition in the Williams percent R. We've alleviated that with this current rally, which I think is probably going to phase out right around, I'm thinking right around these levels below 1200. I'd be surprised if it goes much over 1200. But this is all predicated on a package put together for Greece and Europe. If that doesn't pass, then we're going to see this market once again roll over to the downside. Now, I might want to remind you a couple of things. One, our longer term monthly trade triangles are still negative, as are our weekly trade triangles. So even with this rally that we've seen today, it did not change those two indicators. It did change our daily indicator, which is, is much more sensitive to things like that. But the longer term, monthly and weekly, still negative for the S&P 500. As you can see, we're sort of bound by the, these levels here, the 1220 level, the 1240 on the upside, uh, and 1120 on the downside. So I think we're going to be in that for maybe the next few more days. And then I think potentially, if nothing comes out of Europe or the package for Europe isn't deemed to be quite right, and this is a big, big plus, we may see, and I expect to see, the markets eventually turn back to the downside. I think that's going to be a very, very uh, important level 
and an important announcement that comes out. So if it's not deemed strong enough or whatever the market thinks it should be and it's not, then I think we've got some problems on the downside for the equity markets. I don't think we're out of the woods yet in this market. So let's clear everything off the screen and go to our next market. And we've had some very, very volatile markets. These are just markets you just don't see every day. And we go to the next market, which is silver. And look at the volatility in this market. You've gone from in early September, you're trading around $43 a share, $43 an ounce, not a share, but $43 an ounce, down to close to this day here, which we are down to low that day. It was $26, a little $26 and change. So you've gone almost half the price, actually a little less than that, about $16 break here in a very, very short period of time. And again, the market is not out of the woods yet. All of our indicators, I'm going to pull this over here, all of our trade indicators are negative, monthly negative, weekly, and daily. And you can see basically some of these levels where this turn negative, and it hasn't changed yet from 41.56, the best level, which is very close to up, the, up towards these areas right here. And if I can just put that in for you, just click here, and it shows you it's right here, as a matter of fact, 41.56. The next one was the weekly, and I'll put that in for you. And the weekly came in right here at 39.29, and lastly, the monthly at 33.15. That was on the 23rd. That was just a few days ago. That just shows you how volatile this market really is. That's four days ago. So again, I don't think we're out of the woods yet in this market. Um, I would say chances are we're going to test the lows again or at least jump around the area for a while before we see any kind of real action. A lot of people have been burned in this market. And I'll scope this down. You can see we're very oversold right here. The market's come back into a more normal position. The MACD is still way, way down. No indication it's turned around yet. Maybe it's flattening out a little bit here, but it's still in a negative mode. So I would say for regular traders, just stay away from the silver market. It's too volatile for most traders to even, unless you're, you're looking at this thing basically live during the day, I would stay away from it. So let's go to our next market. Next market is going to be gold. And gold isn't really much uh, different in the sense, but the one thing that gold did do was have this huge kind of like uh, move up. Uh, you can see this long leg below 1550. It really, that the low that we saw there was 1532. Huge move up. Uh, we're 1657 currently, so you've had a $120 move in the space of really less than 24 hours. And it hasn't really changed things. Longer term, we still have a very positive trend. Intermediate and short term, negative. So if you're a short term or intermediate term, you should really be out of this market or if anything short. But I think the thing to look at here, a couple of things. One, we were very oversold, so we've corrected that situation a little bit. We've moved back into to the midpoint, not the midpoint, but we've moved back into the Donchi and trade channels. And we may probably see, I would say, probably resist, resistance right around the 1700 level uh, should we get a rally that pushes it up that far. But again, MACD negative, so no clear cut trend on the upside yet. But on the downside, there's definitely some pushing down. So be very, very careful with this market if you're going to be trading it. Next market we're looking at is going to be the crude oil market. And again, uh, our crude oil indicators. The monthly is negative, weekly negative, daily positive. Um, so you see that just kicked in today. You can see the level was 81.81. It's currently it's about two dollars higher now, 83.78. Now these numbers come in dynamically as they occur on the charts. We've alleviated a very oversold condition again. Remember, we talked when we move outside of the trade channels, we tend to move uh, outside of the channels. We tend to move back into the channel. And with a minus 75, I have to say, even with today's strong move, it would still indicate a potential that this market's going to come down. But we may need more two-way action. Um, and before we see this, what th let's do this. We ha I haven't done this yet, but let me take everything off the screen in terms of the trade triangles. And let's take a look at the just a really just a normal kind of re-pullback in terms of the 
Fibonacci. So let's choose the Fibonacci tool and click right here. Drag this down to the lows. So there we are. Uh, well, we've seen a 50% correction, which came here 83.78. Uh, it's 83.80 last. 85.37 is a 61.8%. That's one of the pullbacks we like to see. So I would imagine right around between here, 83.78 and 85.37, the crude oil market's going to run into problems. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But you can see the good support at 78, which we, we talked about yesterday. That proved to be very accurate, and the market's moved up. I think if we're going to see this market move any higher, it's going to have a hard time doing it. Uh, let me just take this off the screen and just show you some of the things that perhaps could happen. Well, first of all, this is going to be the real challenge. Uh, we said, right, let me just put my illustrator on, sorry. The real challenge is going to be really where we are now to about the 8537 level right around here. That's going to be a real challenge. And I think uh, we'll need to see this market move around a little bit more like that if it's going to have another test of, let's say, the 80 level, which I think could very easily happen. We've tied this market in to the equity market. So if the equity markets are going up, then chances are you've got the crude oil. So this would be stocks going higher, and this would be crude oil also going higher. Vice versa, when crude oil, I see the equity markets go down, chances are the crude oil is going to go down with it. So let's play pay close attention to the market but nonetheless this formation we talked about really doesn't augur that well at the moment for this market now remember we do change our um, positions based on market action and trading if the market action proves to be otherwise we'll want to be long this market but right now it would appear as though the trend is pretty much on the downside and one should be looking at it from that viewpoint so let's clear the screen go to our next market Next market we're looking at is the dollar index. Now, as you may recall, we have been positive on this market, and we are sort of a little disappointed. We've seen a pullback, but nonetheless, we had a pullback here, new highs, pullback here, and we should be finding some support, I think, right around current levels. You can see everything still is pretty much, we've alleviated a very overbought situation, but we're still in a positive with the MACD, as we are with the other indicators. If we put our trade triangles in, you can see quite clearly we are positive and positive on the monthly and the weekly. Only the daily is a little bit negative. Now that's not unusual, but if you remember the original buy point we had on our breakout was 76.10, which is right here. So let me just put that in. Let me scope this out just a little bit further so we have a bigger picture to go with. You've seen me draw this picture time and time again on this market. But uh, we looked at this market from this viewpoint, and that is it was an energy field, which we felt was very strong, and also the breakout, which is right, that came in right around this level, 76.10. Now, the markets pull back. Uh, not unusual to see a market move up, pull back, move up, pull back. And I'm still thinking we're going to see this market move to 80 to 81 on the upside. Uh, however, time will tell if it's right or not, but uh, we will always adapt, and that's the key thing in trading. You have to learn how to adapt and not get too married to any one position in any one direction. So let's take the screen, clear the screen, go to the last market. And the last market we're talking about is the CRB, the Reuters Jeffrey CRB Commodity Index, and that has had a nice move. As we said, the, the pattern has been on this is to basically move down, down, and down. Now, the big thing we saw here was the fact that we hit a very psychological move. And let's just scope this out so we get a little more. Uh, let's go to five years, uh, maybe two years. That's probably better. And just do a line chart. And we'll move this. Now, as you may recall, we're looking for you know Fibonacci numbers. We're very keen on this tool to determine how far a move is going to go. And as you can see, a 50% was right around these levels, uh, 308. Um, the 61.8% was around 294. We never got the 294 yet. Possibly we will. But certainly around this area, the market should be finding some support and possibly 
possibly leveling off. So I would say the pullback uh, from these levels down to where we are is probably at least for the moment completed coming down here. Uh, this is a very important strategic area around the 294, 295, 300 area. I think we could probably base out around here and possibly we'll get a trend going maybe a little bit later on this year. But for the moment, it's the market's definitely on the defensive with our weekly, excuse me, monthly, weekly, and daily all negative. Uh, it's minus 100 cents, a strong trend down. And this, I see no reason right now with the current indication, the current information we have on board to change that direction. So, hey, this is Adam Hewison for Market Club. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you tomorrow. Every success. If you haven't tried out Market Club, if you're not a Market Club member, really get to know these tools. They're very, very useful, and I think you'll really enjoy using them, and I'm confident they will help you make money in the marketplace. So Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place.